Hey everybody, this is our video solution to problem 12 from the Fall 2020 Math 210 final. And here we're sticking with Laplace transforms, and we're going to use them to solve an initial value problem. So remember, an initial value problem is a differential equation with some initial conditions, right? The initial value. So in this case, the initial values are the y of 0 is equal to pi, and y prime of 0 is equal to 1. So the way we use the Laplace transform is, well, we apply it to this entire differential equation. And so when we go to apply the Laplace transform, we need to know how to apply it to the derivative, or in this case, the second derivative of a function. So let's just recall that the Laplace transform of y double prime is given by s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus s times the value of y at 0 minus the value of y prime at 0. So in this case, that will be s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus, well, let's see, y of 0, we have that up here as pi. So this will be minus pi s, and then y prime of 0 is 1, so minus 1. All right, the other bits are very easy to apply the Laplace transform to because we know that the Laplace transform of 2 times y, well, the Laplace transform is linear, so I can pull the 2 out, and I just get 2 times the Laplace transform of y. And the Laplace transform of 0 is 0. Again, linearity would tell you that. So if we put this all together, we get that s squared ly minus pi s minus 1 plus, okay, again, we use the linearity of the Laplace transform, Laplace of 2y, which is 2 times ly, is equal to the Laplace transform of 0, which is 0. Now we're going to solve for ly, the Laplace transform of y. So let's see, how many ly's do we have? Here I have s squared, and here I have 2. And let me put everything that's not an ly on the other side. So I have a minus pi s minus 1. So I move it over and I get plus pi s plus 1. Again, I'm trying to solve for ly. So I'm going to divide by s squared plus 2. And I get that ly is equal to, well, I'm going to break this up into two different pieces. But I'll write it maybe once as if it was together. But I'm going to break this up immediately as pi in fact, I'll just pull the pi to the front. Pi times s over s squared plus 2 plus 1 over s squared plus 2. And I'm doing that because I know in my Laplace transform table I have two very important formulas. One of them is that the Laplace transform of the sine of at is equal to a over s squared plus a squared. And I know that the Laplace transform of the cosine of at is s over s squared plus a squared. So I really like to get it into this form if I if I can. And sure enough, I, I have. So the pi is just a constant, so I don't worry about that. This first one is s over s squared plus 2. So my a would be the square root of 2. So I can rewrite this as pi times the Laplace transform of the cosine of the square root of 2 times t plus well, this one over here isn't quite right. I, I have the s squared plus 2 and a constant on the top, so that indicates we should be using the Laplace of sine. However, since my a squared is supposed to be root 2 squared, I should have a root 2 on the in the numerator. So I'm going to fix this. I'm going to cheat by just putting a root 2 in the numerator. Of course, you can't cheat for long, and so we'll also include a root 2 in a denominator. And so I can now write 1 over the square root of 2 times the Laplace transform of sine of the square root of 2 times t. And so now I can apply the inverse Laplace transform. And on the left, I'll have y. And on the right, again, using the linearity of the inverse Laplace transform, I get to apply to all this put together. I'm going to get pi times the cosine of the square root of 2 times t plus 1 over root 2 times the sine of the square root of root 2t. 
And there we go. We've solved for y. That's not so bad.